This time, what I want to do is I want to build on what we did last time, which was we got this layout working. We've got a space for our menu. We have a whole bunch of data, camera data, and I, I want to connect these two things together. So we need to do a little bit of DOM programming to generate those, and I want to turn them into something that looks like uh, a menu of things you can click over here on the left. I want to have all the street names printed out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the current content that we have. We just have a bunch of copy and pasted text because we wanted to play with this menu in order to have something be here. And, and basically I want to I want to put all of my content in here on the left hand side. Okay, and I think what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get rid of these uh, color blocks because um, I don't need them anymore. So I'm going to I'm going to get rid of the header color. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to change um, change my header colors around. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a darker sort of a dark blue blue gray color for the header and I'll make the text white and I'm gonna get rid of the background color for the map I'll just leave it white for the moment and I'm gonna focus in on this blue section and I'm gonna get rid of this in my nav I'm gonna get rid of that background blue color like so so let's let's start by putting all of our cameras by the street name in this list over here. Okay, so when my page loads, I need to access this nav. I need to generate a whole bunch of elements to put in here based on what's in my array, what's in the array that I have. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go to my index file, and instead of printing out the traffic camera list, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to specify that when the window loads, I want to call a function. And in this function, what I want to do is I want to build my menu. So I don't have a function called build menu yet, but I'm about to create it. So we're going to write a function called build menu. And it's going to take care of generating all of the items on the left. So I need to, first of all, grab a reference to this nav here so that I can work with it. So I'm going to get it out of the DOM and I'm using window.onload because I need that element to exist before I can make use of it. So I'm going to say let nav equals document.querySelector. There's only one of them because I'm, so, I'm asking for it by type here. I only have one in the page, nav. Okay, so I have my nav. Now what I want to do is I want to take this traffic cameras array and I want to loop through it. So I'm going to write a for each and I'm going to get each camera that's in this list and I want to do something with it. And essentially what I want to do is I need a function that's going to create um, a, a menu item for me. So I'm going to, I need a function, um, it doesn't exist yet, but let's, let's say we had a function called build menu item and it takes a camera and it returns back to me a DOM element that I can use and basically what I want to do is I want to take my nav and I want to append into that nav at the end of the list I want to append the camera menu item like so so now I need to we need to write this function so I'm gonna take a camera and I'm going to build a menu item from that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a div. So I'm going to I'm going to say let uh, menu item equals document dot create element and I'm going to create myself a div and this div is where I'm going to put. So I'm going to have all these boxes box 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 for each one of these cameras that I'm putting in here. Now, essentially what I want to do is I want to make a div and I want to set its ID to be equal to the camera's number 
and I'll explain this in a second, I want to specify that it has a class of uh, menu item and I want to give it a title, which I'll come back to in a second. And I want to put some text in here, which is the name of the the name of the uh, street that it's on. And so essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create something that looks like this uh, using DOM methods. So let's talk about each one of these things that I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take my menu item and I'm going to set its ID to be equal to the camera's number, camera number. So you'll remember that in our traffic cameras, each one of these cameras has a number, 8001, 8002, and this number is a unique identifier that I can use to work with this camera. So I'm going to use that as the ID for my element, and you'll recall that every ID that you use has to be unique in the document. So I'm only going to have one thing called 8001, and this div's ID is going to be the way that I'm going to connect this particular camera and this menu item. So they're going to be linked like this. So if we were building a database, we might talk about this as a foreign key. We, we're going to connect these two things together based on this ID. And I'm going to do the same thing in the DOM with the camera number. I'm going to specify that the class name on this is going to be equal to menu item because I, I want to specify some styles for each one of these things in a minute so they'll look the same. So I'm going to give them all a class. And I'm also going to specify a title. So the title is what you see if you hover over the element. And because we're going to cut things off here inside of our menu, it may be that the street name is long and I want to know what it is. So I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to the camera name. The title is going to be equal to the camera name. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the text, the name information is going to go inside the div like this. So I'm going to say menu item dot inner text is equal to camera dot name. So the name is going to appear in two places. It's going to appear here and it's also going to appear if I hover over it. So I've made a div. I set up the ID, the class, the title, the text of the text content inside it, and then I'm going to return the menu item that I just built. So this function takes care of converting a camera into a div that has all of the properties that I want. So down here, I'm going to call that function. I'm going to loop through all my traffic cameras. I'm going to pass one camera in at a time. I'm going to send that camera to my build menu item function and it's going to return back to me a menu item which is really a div and I'm going to put that into my nav and all of this is going to get called when the page is loaded. So if I don't have any mistakes which is <laughs> we'll see I'm going to save this and let's see what happens. Okay this looks good it looked like this works so now you can see over here I have all my streets listed and if we look at the DOM, you'll see that inside of my app and inside of my nav, I've got a div for 8001 class equals menu item, title equals this. So you can see if I hover over one of these things, it'll give me a little pop-up that tells me this is the street name that you have here. I've got the text. This is perfect. So I have all of my streets listed and I've been able to build them uh, build them into the DOM based on my data. Okay, perfect. So what I want to do now is I want to make these look nicer than they look right now. So I want to style each of these items so that they look like buttons. They look like a menu button. All right. So my nav has within it uh, I have this camera button class and I want to change a bunch of things about this class. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to specify some different colors. So I want to use a background 
color. I want to use a blue, sort of a, a blue color for the background. And I want to use um, kind of an off-white color for the text. So let's see how that looks. Hmm, so something something's not right. Oh, I have my class name. My class name is not camera button. My class name is um, menu item, menu item. Sorry about that. There we go. So now I have a darker or a blue, not as dark as my header, but a, a blue and all of my street names are kind of a off white, but there's some things I can do to improve this. So one of the things I can do to improve this, you notice how my mouse changes depending on what you're able to do. So let me show you an example. You see how here in Visual Studio Code, when I can click on something, you'll notice how my mouse turns into the hand pointer. And over here, that's not happening. So I'm not giving my users any indication that these are clickable. So I need to do this. I need to say this thing that you're hovering over is actually clickable. And the way we do that is we say that the cursor needs to be changed to a pointer. So I'm going to save. And now when I hover over it, you can see that over here, nothing happens. But here, when I hover over these, I get that I get that hand for my pointer, so that's great. So they know that this is clickable. This is, I can Currently, I can't do anything when I click, but soon we'll solve that problem. Okay, the next thing I'd like to solve is the fact that this is all really, really tight. So everything is right on top of each other. It's very hard to read. So what I want to do is I want to open up some space in here. So let's just try this out. So let's say I take this one right here. I'm going to see what it would look like if I added some extra padding. So what if I added some padding? What if I added three pixels? Okay, and that's not enough. Five pixels. Uh, let's try eight pixels. Yeah, okay, so here you can see I've got a, a nice little bit of space around this. What if I added eight pixels to all of my, all of my uh, buttons? Let's try that. That's a lot better. Now I have more room on the left and so on. Okay, so what can we, what else can we fix here? Another thing I don't like is I don't like how it's wrapping around my text. So what's happening is it's filling in my text, it hits the edge of the nav, and it wraps the text around to the side. So let's make some changes there to fix that. So what I want to do now is I want to change the wrapping and overflow for all of my menu items. So I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is the same thing we did on our body. I'm going to say that I want the overflow, I want it to be I want it to be hidden. I want to cut it off. So if I were to save this now, you'll see it's it's not it's not anything that extends off to the side is not going to be shown. However, it's still wrapping. So the next thing I want to do is I want to say that um for the white space, I want it not to wrap. So now everything's going as now it's just cutting things off and you can't see what's there. So a typical thing that people will do in, an, in a UI like this is they will use ellipses, these, you know, the three dot, dot, dot to say there's more that you can't see here. So I need to indicate that there's more that they can't see. So I'm going to say I want my text overflow to use ellipses. And now if there's any extra text, you're going to see dot, dot, dot. And if I hover over any one of these, it's going to give me the title. It's going to say, well, this is what you're missing. This is, this is the full data for what should be there, like so. Okay, that's good. So now we've got all of our streets listed on the left-hand side. Our menu's been built. <clears throat> this is good. So the only other thing I'd like to do is I'd love to give some indication of which one you're currently hovering over. So when you move over top of one of these, it'd be nice if we could say this is the one that you're currently looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another, 
I'm going to say dot menu item and I'm going to say when the user hovers over this I want to do something I want to well for example let's let's modify let's modify the color but only when they hover so let's use a slightly different color so if I hover over this I get just a, a bit brighter color for each one of the ones that's there we could do other things too we could say text decoration underline if we wanted to so when you hover you get an underline underneath it or we could do something on the side here which might be kind of interesting so instead of doing this we could say what if we put a border uh, what if we put a border on just the left hand side so I want to put a bar right over here so I'm gonna say border left let's make it thick or thicker three pixels thick solid and let's use a bright color and so I come in here and I go like this that's pretty good but you can see there's a weird snapping happening there so as I'm moving over these what's happening is there's no border and when I hover over it there's a three pixel border so do you see how everything is jumping by three pixels that's not ideal so let's fix that so what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to set a border on the left of every menu item, which is three pixels, and it's going to be solid, but I'm going to make it transparent so that you can't see it. So what that's going to do is you're going to have three pixels of space, and you can see that nothing's jumping now. Everything lines up and I can see I have an easy indicator of which one I'm on everything goes brighter etc the last thing I want to do before we end this segment is I'd like to make it so that when I click on one of these I want to know which camera or which which one of the traffic intersections was clicked so how are we going to do this we know that to do an event like this we're going to have to add a click handler so let's think about how we're going to approach this so one possibility would be we could say let's add a click handler to each and every one of these divs so if you click on this one call a function if you click on this one call a different function so if we wanted to do it that way what we would have to do is we would have to add a click handler maybe right here camera menu item dot add event listener click and we'd have to write a function right here to handle the click however the way that DOM events work events in the DOM bubble meaning that if I click on this element right here and I don't do anything about it it's going to bubble up to the parent it'll bubble up to this nav and so another thing I could do is I could set a click handler just on the nav just on the nav so instead of having to write hundreds of these for all the different elements that I'm going to be working with what if instead I just wrote one on this nav so after I build my menu what if I say nav dot add event listener click and I'm going to write a function which is going to get called whenever the click happens console.log click and I'm going to refresh this open up my console and I'm going to start clicking and you can see two clicks three clicks etc but which one was clicked well if I want to know which one was clicked I'm gonna to have to work with the event object that gets passed to me on my event listener so the event object I'll just print out the event object here so you can see what it looks like whenever I click I click here I click here I click here you can see that it's passing me a mouse event I have a click event and there's a whole bunch of information in here that I can make use of the one that I am interested in is this one here called target target allows me to find the actual element that was clicked so what if instead of event I say event dot target save that and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one right here and you can see that when it says click it also passes me a reference to the DOM element which was clicked 
Now that's great because I have a reference to this div and what I really want is I want that number right there, 8008. I need to get that number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach into the event target and I'm going to get the ID. The ID is what I want. So when I click here, 8002. When I click here, 8013. When I click here, 8053. This is excellent. So now what I can say is I could say let camera number is equal to event.target. This is the element that was clicked. And then I want to get the ID of that element. And now I know which one was clicked. Now, how do I go from the number 8002? How do I get to a camera instance? That's what I need to do. I need to go from 8002 to a camera. Well, we have an array, traffic cameras, and it has every single one of our cameras in it. And every single one of them has a number. So what if we what if we used find? What if we said dot find? Find takes a function and I pass it a camera and I tell it whether or not this is the camera I'm looking for. So I say return camera dot number equals camera number. So does the number on this particular camera, does it equal the number that we found when the user clicked on this item? If it does, we're eventually going to return back which is true. So now we're going to have camera. So when this finishes, what if I console.log the camera number and I'll also console.log the camera object. So you can see what we have here. So I'm going to click on this. You can see that I get 8005 for the camera number. And you can see that I now have camera 8005. If I click here, 810, camera 810. So now I have a reference to the camera number that I worked with. And I'm ready to go on and do the next part of the code. I'll pause there and I'll see you in the next segment.